you see is with on-demand pricing, uh, it's people who are relatively new to AWS or who are uh, trying to benchmark new applications or uh, really have a lot of volatility in their pricing. Typically, they're running between 0 and 15% utilization over a one or three year period. Um, when you get to reserved instances, uh, a customer at that point has made a decision to, um, to basically run on AWS and with that workload, uh, somewhere between 15 and 100% utilization. Uh, over the entire term, and they don't want their instances going away at all. They know that they have a certain load that they care about. Um, so think of your web application servers, think of your database servers, anything where you really want to make sure that it's around. When you get to spot instances, we really are talking about opportunistic computing. And what that means is that you typically have um, a couple different use cases. Two of the most common ones are where um, you have a certain baseline workload which you're running on reserved instances and you want to accelerate that workload by opportunistically adding more capacity, i.e. spot. Uh, alternatively, uh, you have a certain need by date when you need to get your, your workload done by and it doesn't matter, the value of your, your, your data doesn't really change significantly before that need by date and so you're able to delay it. And so that's another great time for spot. Pretty much most of the other opportunities are unreserved. Dave, you were talking about, if, just one more follow-up, and I know Jeff wants to jump in. Yep. You were talking about utilization, yep. uh, a, a range, a spectrum. Um, w how are you measuring utilization? Can you just clarify that a little bit? Sure, in terms of utilization, what we want to look at is that one instance running 744 hours costs very differently for us than 744 instances running during one hour. Yep. So when it comes down to it, utilization for us means that you're running uh, one instance every hour during the month, and that would be 100% utilization. So 30% utilization would be effectively 30% of 744. Got it, okay. So I'm just curious, I thought I understood, but now I'm a little confused. What's it, so an on-demand is I need, I need horsepower, yep. and spot I need more horsepower. What's the difference between the two? So the best way of thinking of it is that spot, you basically go in there and bid for our unused capacity. So you set your bid price, the maximum you're willing to pay. And then we have a spot price, which is based on supply and demand. Um, since we're selling our unused capacity, that spot price will change over time. And uh, if the spot price is below the bid price, you get capacity. If it goes above, you lose that capacity. I don't get it. Okay. Uh, so we'll actually terminate your instances at that point. Okay. Um, on demand, if you acquire it, right, then it's, you I got have it, it for right. however it, long It spins more. up, it goes. Yeah. So on the spot, am I buying unused capacity from Amazon, or am I buying unused capacity from Dave, because he's not using it on his project, that he, uh, he's got reserve stuff? Unused capacity from Amazon. From Amazon, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I can't arbitrage my I, th I thought it was capacity. a secondary uh, <laughs> secondary market, like, uh, like the ticket brokers. So you talk about that. We actually have something called the Reserved Instance Marketplace. Right. And uh, the Reserved Instance Marketplace is, is where we have reserved instances that customers have purchased from Amazon and they can buy and sell those. And so, we talk about a secondary market, we actually have one of those too. So you do have one, okay. Yes, uh, and that's, the reason why that came into existence is that customers were asking for more flexibility with reserved instances. And so, uh, at the end of the day, what they were really asking for was uh, a way of saying, my business need has changed, I want to sell this excess one or get rid of it somehow, and then buy another one of another sort. It's a, so Dave, can you share with us, even in general terms, um, any data that you have uh, from a customer perspective on how much money I can save in, in each of these models at scale? Yeah, so let's just start out with on demand. So depending on, uh, the best way of thinking about your cost savings and on demand is what is the peak amount of capacity that you would have had to purchase on premise? And if you were to run that the whole time, uh, that's what you would have to provision to meet your, your potential needs in terms of demand. Uh, versus only running that for one hour, right? And so, you know, the gamut there ranges significantly, right. um, so it's hard to throw around exact quotes on that one. On reserved, if we benchmark that against on-demand, uh, you can get upwards of 72% off the on-demand price. And for spot, typically on average, we see at least 80% savings. Um, however, we've seen upwards of 92% off the on-demand price. Okay, and, and then, um so you, then you mentioned the reserve instance marketplace. Mm -hmm. When did you guys launch that service? So we launched that, I believe it was July or August of last year. Of last year, yep. right, okay. And, and then that transaction as well goes through Amazon, of course, right? Correct. So, so I get the same sort of interface, pricing transparency, yep. everything else, it's not some, some new interface. What kind of traction is that getting? 
it's actually working out really well. It's meeting our internal goals. It's uh, in terms of the buyer side, we're seeing a lot of great selection out there, so you can find new new pricing terms and great uh, great selection and pricing. On the on the seller side, we're actually seeing, assuming that you price at a very competitive rate, we're seeing that um, you know reserved instances are rotating off that marketplace at a good churn. Is it is this stuff patentable? I mean, these, oh, yes. these so the the. So what's patentable? The the methodology that you use to determine all this marketplace and transactions, or is it the concept itself, or both? Or so um, you know, there's the whole gambit of utility patents versus business methodology patents aren't really as patentable. There. Yeah, they're kind of fuzzy, right? And yeah. So um, a lot of this comes down to the utility type patents of how does spot work, how does the reserved instance marketplace work, how do those interchange? And the actually. details behind it to make sure it's accurate and yep. fair, and, and so you guys obviously have filed and will continue to file patents in that area. It's actually a, you know, a great area uh, out there for us. There's a lot of white space um, for innovation, and so, um, you know, it's, it's a great place to be in terms of continuing to innovate and, and move the field forward, and so we hope to continue to kind of push that trend. Are you hiring people? Oh, I mean, we are hiring everybody's people. hiring, right? <laughs> what, what are you looking for? So on my teams, I'm looking for a great senior manager, um, someone that, uh, leveling at Amazon's a little weird. We have people that, I've had a senior vice president of a thousand plus person company work for me before. Uh, that, so senior directors and directors, like, at most other companies, that's the level of person that I'm looking for to run Spots Engineering Org. Uh, I'm looking for principal engineers, so people that are uh, super experienced, that are really excited about doing things in highly distributed, highly scalable computing, um, senior engineers, web developers, a product manager as well, so someone that's really, um, that has both a business and technology background. Um, so You're exploding. <laughs> we, we are hiring all over the place, and I would love to, to connect with anyone who's interested. Now, Dave, you guys announced, uh, I guess it was in March, that you were giving away Trusted Advisor, I think for a month, to let people try it out. How much um, does Trusted Advisor get involved in recommending pricing? That's a great question. We've already made over $22 million uh, in recommendations on how to optimize costs. So people could save $22 million worth of uh, money just optimizing based on reserved instances. So it's one of those things where Trust Advisor is a great tool and, and we're going to continue to innovate in that direction of uh, helping customers to save money. So how's Trust Advisor work? Like I say, you, you sort of did a freebie in March, if I, if I recall. That's right. And then that, now it's a service that I can, I can purchase, right? Correct. And then so the, the economic justification of purchasing that service is you're going to tell me how to save money and how to improve best practice. So it actually comes along free with uh, premium support. And so um, I believe it's enterprise and I forget, the, maybe it's developer support. And along with that, you get the Trusted Advisor service, which basically will perform a set of checks against uh, the service you're running, your resources and your price. Um, and what that comes down to is, are your resources idle? Um, can you optimize your resources based on reserved instances? Can you, um, any number of these checks. Are your security groups set up right? And all of our best practices we've been folding into the Trusted Advisor tool. And so, um, you know, our hope is to continue to expand that over time, and you can check it, you know. Now, premium support, you mentioned premium support. Uh, you're, I presume you're involved in, in, in that pricing as well, or, or uh, not necessarily? Premium support, not, not at no, all. No, okay, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not even going to ask you that then, because uh, <laughs> I, I had sort of a detailed question there, but it's not fair if that's not your area. How about the Amazon TCO calculator? Do you have any visibility on that? I do have visibility. So that was interesting. I've been playing around with that quite a bit in the last several months, and, uh, I have to say, I, I give you props because it's an honest calculator. And the reason I know it's an honest calculator is because you actually can make, for instance, since you can make on-premise servers mm -hmm. more expensive. You, you, I think your storage pricing may be a little, little aggressive, a little high for the on-premise, so I think I could probably get some on the, on the spot market, market open, but in general, I found that calculator to be, and I, I would consider an honest calculator. Mm -hmm. It wasn't rigged. Yep. You know, a lot of these TCO calculators are just kind of phony. But, um, but that's a service that you put forth to people. Do people, act, are they actively using it? I mean, I know it's about lead gen and getting people to engage, but do people actually use that to make business cases? Definitely. So, a lot of what we're trying to do, the economics are there for uh, AWS to be a, um, to win against on-prem almost in, in every scenario. Um, so our goal is really just to provide the data 
to help people sell from within companies themselves. And so people are using the TCO calculators. People are really starting to build those, those use cases inside. In fact, uh, I've seen some people leverage tools like that. They say, this is broken. Over the weekend, they move to AWS and try something out, whether it's, there's a large enterprise, uh, uh, an airplane company that was running on us that uh, their testing app was broken. So over the weekend, someone did a big spot, uh, spot trial and like all of a sudden, they had a testing service that was working better than their provider. And uh, the next thing you know, like there's a enterprise salesperson you know, going into the lobby and they're like, shh, we haven't told anyone yet. Yeah. So, so this is classic Amazon. It's like self-service pre-sales. Yes. Yeah. 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 And then as, as shadow as IT, it works perfectly because by that time, uh, you really develop that that trust that hey, we are gonna really reduce the price. And it was so low of a cost that they didn't even occur to them that 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 even anything was was changed. Right. So. So Dave, let me shift gears just a little bit, because we had a lot of people talking about kind of the culture. It's a little different. I grew up in Portland, right? So Seattle is Boeing, right? Boeing and Microsoft and Starbucks and, and, and more and more Amazon, right? So talk a little bit about what makes the culture special and why you guys are able to continue to execute in, you know, kind of extensions, 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 extensions into new areas. Yeah. Um, so I think a lot of the difference in our culture comes down to uh, we have the decision-making process is really pushed down to each of the teams. So I'm effectively a mini general manager, so I can make many different decisions across the AWS smart market, uh, across reserve 